Hey guys, it's Mei Mei, and today I'm going to do a Make a Fuss card. I've talked about these before. This is a card where I spend a little more time and do a little more intricate work, and I think this will be really cool using our new Banner Blessing stamp set. This cross, um, I'm going to do something I've always wanted to do that I've never done before, so let's just get started. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to stamp this cross three times on some cardstock. I'm using the ink from Spectre Noir, the Finesse ink that's alcohol proof dye ink. I'm really enjoying this, um, kind of in place of my memento. I really like how this looks when I um, ink it up and it really works well with my alcohol markers. So I've been leaning to it pretty good. So I'm gonna stamp this guy over on my cardstock and I might stamp it twice because it really doesn't matter what dye ink you're using. Sometimes you just don't get a really great, great impression with dye ink. And I noticed I missed some of that flower. So I'm gonna come back and stamp that again. And I wanna get three of these because I'm gonna do, not decoupage, that's not really a way to look at, but I'm gonna do some cutting and some layering of these flowers on the image. I'll show you what I mean. I've seen it done, I think it's really pretty, and I think it'll look really cool to do it on this particular stamp. So I'm just gonna go ahead and stamp th uh, two more of these and we'll start coloring. So now that I've got all three stamped, I'm gonna do some coloring and I'm gonna do some simple coloring because I'm not a fancy colorer, guys. So I've got three yellows that are gonna coordinate together. These are my um, Nouveau markers, I love these. I've got two greens, a lighter and a darker. I'm going to do some purple, three different purples there. And then I've also brought over some brown for the cross. So I'm gonna start with the flower. I wanna start with the yellow and I'm gonna use my lightest yellow first. So I'm gonna look at these guys and see which one that is. It's this one. And I'm just going to do the flowers yellow and purple. So I'm going to start with this one. Well, actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to start over here. What I want to do is everything I do on one, I'm going to do on the other. Now, I'm going to be covering these up a little bit in places, but I'm not exactly sure how yet. So what I thought I would do to save myself time is to go ahead and color everything anyway. And then if I don't use every flower where it's seen, you'll see what I'm saying when I get there then at least I won't have to go back and do all the coloring again. So I'm just gonna do some coloring here and there and putting some, dropping some color in here. But everything I do here, like I said, I wanna do on all the flowers the same way. So as I'm coloring now, I'm not sure how I'm doing the flowers, but I do know this. I only need one cross, and here's what I decided to do. I'm going to choose the one card that I think I colored the best as far as staying in the lines, and it's this guy. I feel like I stayed in the lines really well here. So this is going to be the cross that I'm going to use. The rest of these are going to be pieces that I pile um, in layers on top of this. So I'm just going to finish coloring this one cross, and I'm not going to worry about coloring the cross on those.
Now one thing I am going to do is I'm going to color two of the banners because I'm going to layer the banner like I'm going to lay the, layer the flowers. So I want to make sure I have two banners um, colored. Also, this one that I'm coloring, I'm going to stamp my sentiment on because it'll be the one on the top. So I want to make sure I get my sentiment stamped on this guy. I've decided to do with sympathy. Oh, after I throw my ink pad across the room, I'm going to do with sympathy there in the middle. Let me ink this up. One thing about this stamp set I want to point out, it's not extremely flat. There is a little dip in it, or not the stamp set, but the ink pad, there's a little dip in it, kind of like whenever we use distress inks, how those ink pads are not extremely flat. So make sure you kind of go around and around on your stamp to make sure you get good coverage there. All right, with sympathy. Okay, now for the fun part. Some of you guys will leave me on this, but we're gonna start fussy cutting. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna layer these flowers on top of these flowers, either one high or maybe two high. I'm not exactly sure how high I'm gonna go yet, but I know I'm gonna to wanna to play a little bit. So I think I'm gonna cut all the flowers off of this one, okay? And go ahead and cut my banner as well, but I'm not gonna cut the leaves. I'm gonna let these leaves be the leaves on this bottom one. They'll be the bottom base, okay? So now we're just gonna do some fussy cutting. So now you can see I have cut the banner. I decided not to cut the shadow because the shadow is already here. So I just cut the banner. I cut these two flowers, this one, and then the same here. And see how I didn't cut the green? I'm letting this be the leaves. Now over here, I'm only going to cut this one and this one out because I'm going to stack them and let those be the most forefront. So on this um, cross, although I went ahead and colored these because I wasn't sure how I was going to do the layering, I'm only going to need these larger flowers. So I'm going to cut those out. So now you can see I've cut this one twice and this one twice. I'm going to move these guys aside and now it's time to cut this guy out around the perimeter of the cross, all of the flowers and everything. So here I'm just going to take my time and go around the cross, cut it out, and then I'm also going to cut out all of the flowers on the outside. I'm not worried about the inside, um, just around the edges of the flower of the cross and the flowers. This is a spot you could let your scanning cut do too. If you have a scanning cut, you could let it do this outside, but I wanted to get all of those cut right to their line, so I did them with the scissors. And the next thing I'm gonna do is use my black marker and coming from the back side, I'm gonna go around and color the white edge. And I'm gonna do this on um all the pieces, all the flowers, everything I cut, all this does is kind of hide the multitudes of sins of my fussy cutting because look, there's a bunch of mess ups on my fussy cutting and this just kind of hides that. So I'm just running around and doing this. Now I've got to tell you a tip about this. You spent all this time coloring, all this time working, two things. Don't leave your marker in place too long because it'll grab ink and it'll smear. And number two, don't go from the front. If you go from the front and you slip, it's on your coloring. But if you go from the back and you slip, it's not a big deal. It'll just go to the back of the um, image. So everything's outlined. Now I'm gonna use these little black foam squares. You see how they're black on the side? I think these work really good for this kind of thing. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and start putting these little foam squares on the back of these guys. What happens when, we, when you use the black ones is they kind of disappear to the side. You don't see that white line so much. I got too many there, I don't need that many. I'm gonna see if I can move this one. Might not can. If I can't, I'll cut a small piece. 
Yes, I can. Okay, so that one there. And then I'm going to go ahead on these and add one. Flip this over and stick one little piece there. And same here. Oop, I'm going to have to cut one for that. Let's use this here. And use two on this one. Now, I'm using more foam than you probably usually see me use. And the reason is, these guys are going to be pretty delicate, you know. So, they're going to get kind of pressed around. So, you want to make sure you got plenty of foam on the back. Even if you do need to cut some pieces and kind of go in there and lay them in, that's what's really going to make this card work is the foam. So, I'm going to lay these on everywhere I can. And then I'll come back and cut some pieces to fill in any big gaps that I've got. What I do to do that is I just come down the side and just snip these guys in half while they're still on their little container. And I just leave them there. I use a lot of these like this, a lot of the little half pieces for things. So they'll be fine like that. And then I can tuck these pieces in. I feel like that's got everybody very good. Now we can start laying things on. I think I will start with, let's do the banner first. So just peel these little pieces off. How you like all those little polka dots? They're so cute. It helps me to find them to throw them away. You know, a lot of times you can't find these little pieces. They blend in with things. So when they're polka dot, I can see. All right, I'm going to lay this right over the piece there. So you see, I start to get a little bit of dimension. So you can see now why we wanted to color behind it. Now I'm going to put the purples on because I think the purples are only going to be one layer tall. So I'm going to peel the backer off of this one. I'm going to place it where it will fit right in like a puzzle piece, just like so. And then we'll do some more purple. This little guy goes right up here. And this works better with a thinner uh, foam. My foam is actually probably a little tiny bit thicker than I really wanted it to be. I still think it's going to work. Um, but the thinner your foam, the better. So this is not the place for your super thick uh, foam. So there's that one. And then let's see what's next. I want to add that one right there. Let me find it. There it is. So this is the only one that's going to kind of nestle next to another flower. Um, and I want to get that in there just right. Again, it's like a puzzle piece. Isn't that cool how that does? It fits so perfect. Love it. All right, and then let's see which one this one is. Well, we can do this one. This one is this one. This one goes toward, oh, this is the same one. And these are the ones I wanted to stack three high anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and stack that one on just like that. That's so cool, the dimension. I love that. You'll see it from the side in just a minute when I turn it. Let me make sure, yep. You might want to use tweezers for this too to get in here really well. Just line that one up like that. I'm going to stick one more on top. That third layer is not really necessary, but I did them and I want to see how it looks. So I'm going to go ahead. But when you make your own, you might decide you don't need this third layer that I'm putting on. And I totally understand that. I just think it's kind of cool to create all of this height and dimension. All right, look. See what it does? Isn't that cool? I love that. Look how, how deep and dimensional that is. I just love that. Now, there's something else I want to do. Just hold on. So I'm going to use my Gina Marie nested stitched oval dies. And I'm going to cut like a backer for the cross to lay on. So the first one I'm going to do is this plaid. And I got that in there crooked, but it'll still cut. It'll still cut it just fine. So I'll run that through and cut that one out. This is the bigger oval that I'm using. Actually, it's the largest one in the set. I'll show you what it looks like here. Let me take that out. Look how pretty that is. I'm very zoomed in. I apologize. Okay, and then I'm going to do it in purple for a smaller one that's going to sit right on top of that one. And this is the one that's actually going to hold my cross, this purple color. So pretty. All these spring colors. It's freezing cold and raining here. So if I can play with spring colors, it gets me at least in the mood for spring to get here sooner. And there it is, the little purple one that's going to go right on top of our yellow one, just like that. All right, let's get this out of the way. Now then, 
I want my purple cross to mount right here and I'm not gonna pop it up. The reason is, or not my purple cross, but my cross on the purple. I'm not gonna pop it up because I have plenty of dimension, okay? So this is gonna get glued straight down to my little scallop circle. It's really cool too because I can use the flowers to hold it. It's kind of funny. All right, and let's just nestle that in just like so. Get that all pressed down. You could glue this down first and then come back and put your flowers in so you don't have to press them. But I'm kind of building this as I go. I don't really know where we're headed with it. I kind of do know where we're going. All right, and the same thing here. I have too much dimension to keep stacking, in my opinion. So I think I'm just going to glue that straight down. I can't do it. It needs to be popped up. I wanted to, but I was afraid once I laid it there, it might need some foam, and it does. Let me get some really quick. I'm just going to use Scotty for it. So I'm going to flip this guy over carefully. Put some Scotty on the back. Now let's get it in place. That looks good. All right, now I can press all of that down carefully. That's so pretty. And that's going to be the front of my card. So let me get a card base. So this is just going to be a standard A2 card. So I need to score it at five and a half here. Just like so. I'm using um, Not Your Mama's card stock for my card base. It's super thick. So I really want to take my time here when folding and creasing this one. I've got that started. Let's work this crease in. I just thought it'd be pretty and kind of substantial for this card. I feel like it needs something kind of heavy. So there's that. And then, of course, this is going to get glued straight down. How gorgeous is that? That is so pretty. I might want to put another layer of um, paper here. Let me check. There's something about all that purple that just really speaks to me. I tried lots of different colors, but the purple just really works. So I'm going to use this purple as my um, matte piece. It might be pretty to emboss this piece because it's such a solid color. But again, I've got so many layers working. I'm just going to put this straight down. And purple's a good color for the cross with the flowers anyway. And I didn't want to use exactly the same purple. I thought it'd be neat to mix the purples, especially since there's a little variation in my flowers there. So it will work. All right, well, let's glue this guy down into place. And that is our card done. Well, not done. It's, it's our card built, but there's one more thing I want to do. So that is beautiful, but I really want this to be a focal point, these layered images and things. So let me show you my plan. This is why I want to, okay, I'm done with the card itself, okay? I'll leave these cards blank because I don't know who this will go to and I want to have it for someone when I need it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my crystal glaze from Nouveau and I'm going to come to these flowers and I'm going to crystal glaze these flowers and I'm also going to crystal crystal glaze the banner. I just think this will be really pretty to have these top layers have a little shine to them. So I'm just rubbing that on the flowers and I wanted to do this now because I don't need to do anything else to the card so I can let this sit and dry for ever how long it takes for it to dry. This actually dries fairly quickly. People have asked me the length of time, and I don't really know the exact length of time. And it really depends on the humidity where you're at, too. But um, it dries pretty quick. Just covering that top layer so they'll be nice and shiny. If you were a glitter person, you could even drop some micro-fine glitter in this and have a little glittery flowers. That'd be pretty, too. And then I want to do the banner as well. It'll be cloudy at first. Don't worry. When it dries, it'll be clear. It'll be so pretty. Now, before you leave that to dry, stand it up and look at it a little bit. See if you've missed any spots. Kind of wiggle this around so you can see it. Not for too long. You don't want it to start to shift. But if you do that a little bit, you can see if you've missed any spots on your flowers or on your banner. This one looks a little weak in here. You want to touch it up now while it's really wet. If you wait till it starts to dry, it's harder to touch it up. It's a little more obvious because this is a little dimensional. That's pretty. Isn't that pretty when I do that? It's going to be gorgeous. All right, we're going to leave that to dry. And when it's dry, we'll come back and look at it and see what we think. So there it is, guys. It's not completely dry. I let it sit for about 45 minutes so I could come back and kind of do the move around for you guys to get to see it, but it's so pretty. I'm really happy with it. I think it's very, it's not different. I mean, it's very vintage. That's what it feels like to me, very vintage. 
and I love that feel. I hope you guys enjoy it too. So there you go, a Make a Fuss card using the Banner Blessing stamp set. Let me bring that back over. In case you've not seen the stamp set, this is it. The cross has this banner and all of these sentiments fit inside of it. I just can't imagine what you guys are going to make with it. It's going to be incredible. There you go, guys. I can't wait to see what you make. So head to our website, maymaymadeit.com, and share your creations on our customer gallery. That's where we get to see what you guys are doing as well. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Talk to you again real soon. Bye-bye.